Hey everybody, this is Jim from MusicPlayers.com saying hi to you at NAMM 2016. Having a great time. We're at one of my all-time favorites, Rupert Neve Designs. There's not a mix I've had in the last four or five years I haven't used my Master Bus processor on. Anyone who's heard my mixes knows that. It's great stuff, but that's not all they have. They have a great line of things. I just wanted to hand it over a little bit to Tristan, let you talk a little bit about Rupert Neve Designs, what you guys do, and everything you've been doing the last few years. Yeah, so, so Rupert Neve Designs was founded by Rupert about uh, 11 years ago now uh, with the idea of uh, after he sold the original Rupert Neve company in 1975, he's basically only worked for other people uh, and he's been do had been doing consulting design and other people's design, but he really wanted to start a new company where he could be in control from start to finish of the design through the production. And so that was the idea with the Rupert Neve Designs products. Everything is built around his transformer designs and op-amp designs, and uh, everything is class A, uh, built around the same principles that the old units, the units from the 70s that are so popular, were built around. But uh, unlike a lot of other people, he's not just trying to clone the past, he's improving upon the past. They're, these new units are more versatile, more flexible. They are built for this modern world where people are predominantly using DAWs. And so that's what Rupert Neve Designs is all about. And w what would you say, like, um, in the last few years were the biggest releases you guys have had? And what was the thought behind those designs and how they're helping people that are primarily, I mean, I have a hybrid setup. My front end is analog. I got some great outboard gear. I'm in the box I'm using Pro Tools, and then when I go out, you know, through my my outboard chain coming out of the mix, I've also got my Neve stuff in there. I've got some dangerous music stuff I love. How does all that integrate? And um, specifically, can you talk a little bit about the Silk Circuit, especially in the preamps, because that not only has helped me at at the back end, but I mean coming in and what those things do. Yeah. So I mean, in the last few years. And um, one of the things that it actually took quite a long time to convince Rupert of was the 500 series. Um, because that's, you know, really has become quite popular in the modern studio world because it allows people to, you know, add pieces, quality pieces, bit by bit. Uh, and so that was one of the major things uh, that's become really, really popular because Rupert, a lot of people just port, port an existing design into the different standard. And with Rupert, it was important to, from the ground up, design new amplifiers, new transformers for the standard to make it all work. And so that, you know, in that range, we have the 511 mic pre, which is uh, one of our best selling units that um, single channel mic pre, 72 dB of very good gain, swept high pass filter, and then most importantly, as you're asking, the variable silk. And so the variable silk is an idea that Rupert came up with that allows you to take out and add in the output transformer, saturation, and harmonics, uh, which is some of the qualities of the vintage units that people love, that warmth, that fatness, that bigness. Uh, but it lets you take that in and out. If you want a more open, clear sound, you can have that. If you want just a little bit, you can have that. Uh, so it really allows you the flexibility to drive the, the mic pre and get that kind of classic, rig, big, full Rupert Neve sound. Um, some other products we've had in that time, uh, the new R&DI that came out this past year has been a huge hit. Uh, and that was something that uh, really was more the design team uh, was playing around with uh, a trans one of Rupert's transformer designs. Oh, you know, that would be great for my bass rig. And it was literally a thing where in the office we were hearing him mess around with it and said, okay, you know, compared it to some other DIs and it was like, wow. That's uh, phenomenal. And so that pretty quickly became a product because it was pretty apparent that it was so special. Um, and then some other things, you know, the 5060 is a very interesting unit. Uh, it's very much designed, designed for the modern studio where you want the absolute finest analog quality without compromise. But at the same time, you're living in a world where you can't have you know, a recall that takes more than five minutes. Uh, and so this piece basically is, it's called the centerpiece because it is the hub that 
the analog and the digital studio revolves around. It, you can dump 24 channels from your DAW into it. It sums them. It, can use, it has inserts and patch points for connecting your key outboard pieces. Uh, and then you have a monitor section where you can you know, have top quality control of your speakers. You can run your two track returns. Uh, and you even have DAW control, talk back, head, you know, class A headphone amplifying. And so it's, in many of the digital analog consoles out there, they have to compromise the audio quality because of add the added features and circuitry. And so this is very much committing to a DAW based, the DAW does the heavy lifting with the 5060. You know, you use a controller or whatever exists in 10 to 15, 20 years, uh, but this is just the high quality analog hub that the whole studio runs through. It sort of looks like a little, a little 5088, right? <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's kind of a that we wanted to have a little. We wanted to have that presence, uh, and the audio quality. We actually have, you know, I, I think probably seven or eight 5088 owners have these in their either home or B rooms um, for you know when they can't mix in the main room. If this, you know, if they've got a month long block out in the main studio, um, they just use these at home, and they've all been. You know, very very happy with the results. It's you know maybe not quite to that same level, but it's very it's better than almost any other console I can think of, sound wise. Okay, gang, there you have it. We're with Tristan from Rupert Neve Designs. You know, I love their gear. Hear a little bit more about what they've been doing. And I will say, with that new DI, I've been telling like. Uh, not only bass players, my guitar players are coming for tracking, and every one of them, you know, whenever we do a mix, I always audition the Silk Circuit for them. I'm like, you want the red, you want the blue, we go back and forth, we A and B, and so in this case, I can say, look, you guys want that on your, when you're performing live, you want a little bit of that special sauce, if you will, buy one of these things. And they were just like, I can get that on my rig? Like, yeah, just yeah, boom, there you go, buddy, you know, just, live. We've had, a num we've had a number of tours where it's like, it's, it's not subtle, you know, it's uh, many of these changes are pretty subtle, uh, but front of house guys instantly go, "I'll take eight of those," and you know, <laughs> put them on everything. I uh, even had a story of a guy, you know, basically swapping out the DI for a banjo player on a big tour, not telling him, and then he said, literally within a minute of playing in the the sound check that day, uh, "Sounds really good today." <laughs> it's like. Oh yeah, I've made made a small change, so that's been really exciting, and uh, hopefully that's that's up for a TEC award tonight. So hopefully that comes through. I hope so too. You guys deserve it. I, I can tell you that. So we're signing off for Rupert Neve Designs. I just wanted to add a little bit there at the end about that piece. Just remembering uh, my dialogues this year in the studio with with uh, my clients. So there you have it. Having a great time. Rupert Neve Designs, great stuff. Check it out. We'll see you again soon. Cool.